Hello, everyone. Thank you for having me this afternoon. Um, as uh, our organizer will say, I am Amra Ferrari, and I'm a PhD candidate at uh, uh, University of Milan Bicocca. Uh, I also work with Horizon SciTech and Games, which is a company uh, who uh, is made from uh, young scientists and psychologists. And we want to let people know that video games are actually uh, good for your brain. So above all this, I am also an uh, avid video game player. And I've been playing video games uh, since I was five or six years old. Um, but most importantly, I have been a female for even longer. <laughs> so today I will, uh, will be speaking about an issue which is gender equality in video games. And uh, I won't give you any answers, uh, but I just like you to think about the issue. So uh, first of all, I want to be uh, speaking about this sentence. Uh, how many of you have heard this sentence or uh, maybe even thought this sentence uh, during their lifetime or a variance of this. Like, girls don't play video games. They are not good at video games. They should not play video games. Uh, so why is that? Why do we have this stereotype hiding in the back of our minds? Um, maybe it's because of this, because in the, in the 80s and 90s, uh, video games were heavily marketized towards men. So I don't know if this is the answer to why we think that uh, gaming is a stereotypical uh, male activity, but it may be something like this. So um, first of all, I have to say, as you probably know, it is a stereotype. It's, it is not true that girls don't play video games. So this is some uh, US data uh, from 2019. We can see that. 54% uh, of video game players are male, but uh, uh, 46% are female. So it's almost 50-50. So why are we here talking about this? Um, because uh, stereotypes have an impact on how people perceive other people, but most importantly, uh, on how people think of themselves. So uh, stereotypes about uh, gender equality uh, are affecting how uh, gamers and girl gamers are, um, are playing video games. So uh, we, I'm going to be uh, asking you a question. So um, just close your eyes and think about um, what is the first image that comes to your mind when you think about the term gamer girl? I have a couple of ideas because to me, we have two different stereotypes of the gamer girl. We have the first one, our dear Belle Delphine. <laughs> she, uh, as you can see, is an attractive young lady, uh, but she will probably use, uh, try to use an Xbox controller in order to play the PS4. Um, so uh, on the other side, we may have another type of stereotype, which is the ugly Betty. So uh, in the first case, our Belle Delphine is an attractive. She is definitely a lady, but she's kind of a fake fan. She cannot really like video games, like, like, like. Uh, on the other side, we have ugly Betty. She maybe loves video games. She maybe is good at video games, but she's not quite uh, an attractive lady. She maybe doesn't fall into the box we put ladies in, so she doesn't care about makeup or fashion or romantic movies. So either way you look at it, you cannot be simultaneously a woman and liking video games. This is obviously a stereotype. Um, so what does it happen when you uh, think this way? Um, the consequences of stereotypes are really tangible because according to some researchers, you can see a lot of names down here, uh, female players tend to limit their offline gameplay uh, because uh, they want to fit into uh, the situation in which uh, a girl should play video games just in moderation. Um, and this is especially caused by the fact that do, they do not own usually a console, a personal console, but they use the household console, so maybe the brother's console. This, thing, uh, this leads to the fact that uh, female players uh, do not have the same liberty of males into playing games because they do not own the physical device and maybe the games they play are chosen by someone else. Uh, as for the online situation, uh, one among many um, 
many studies has uh, recorded um, the fact that um, female players uh, receive up to three times more negative comments about their gameplay um, if compared to uh, male players and up to two times more friend requests and messages. So obviously they tend to not go online, but this is a, a self-fulfilling prophecy because if uh, game, female uh, gamers are not able to play, uh, they won't get any better if, because they do not exercise. If they do not exercise, they will be mocked by male players because they do not know how to play. So tentative solutions, what can we do about this? Uh, I will be speaking briefly about two uh, different takes. Uh, on tentative solutions, the first one is literature stake. So <clears throat> when we think about literature, um, we unfortunately encounter a lot of de uh, demonization of uh, video games and of uh, male players. Here are some examples. Uh, a significant interaction indicated that men exposed to stereotypical content, so video games, made the judgments that were more tolerant of real life sexual harassment compared to controls. And the other one is maybe even worse because it says indicating a relationship between video game consumption and the rape myth acceptance via interpersonal aggression and hostile sexism. You see that this is a really bold statement. It's not like, well, maybe there's a connection. It's saying that there is a connection between own style, um, uh, hostile sexism and video games. This is some strong language. What does it cause? The consequence is that video games are portrayed as evil and they encourage female players' self-exclusion because a female gamer who uh, reads these kind of papers gets scared and says, I don't want to have anything to do with this. Uh, on the other side, <laughs> ironically, there are hundreds of pages about male players, and once again, the female perspective is not, uh, is not considered because uh, they want to talk about gender equality, but again, they end up talking about men and not female players. So let's hope for the industry. Uh, the industry solution is girlfriendly games which can be a really good thing, uh, no misunderstanding, but um, in these kind of games we have, uh, for example, fewer action sequences, more storytelling elements, uh, they're slowly paced, they encourage cooperation rather than competition, and they have female lead characters. Now, there are some really uh, beautifully made female lead characters, uh, but um, this is not really, um, the case in many, uh, in many occasions because um, we have to make a difference between uh, female lead characters like Lara Croft. Everyone loves Lara because she is a really uh, full uh, character. But um, have you seen the movie uh, Ghostbusters made in the female version? How many people saw this? Did you like it? <laughs> Some people say that it's not really good because they just uh, put some boobs on male characters. So <laughs> this is the, the problem with uh, some girlfriendly games. Some um, le female lead characters are not credible enough because they just happen to be female, but they're not uh, psychologically studied in order for them to be female. So uh, what is the problem with girlfriendly games? Uh, they do not sell. Cover arts in which women are centrally located sell fewer copies than any other game. So uh, covers with male protagonists, covers with secondary female figures, or even uh, uh, with no human figures on the cover. So uh, girlfriendly games, what, she, what is the problem with girlfriendly games? Uh, the thing is, uh, maybe they know the desires of every female that does not uh, come into the stereotypical box. Um, so if, because they're so heavily marketed towards stereotypical feminine themes that both males and non-stereotypical female players do not want to buy them. So what can we, uh, can we do about that? Uh, we can, uh, we can talk about four-wave feminism and I don't want to scare you with this term. I just want to say that according to this philosophy, let's say, um, Fourth wave feminism is advocating for a genderless society. 
This does not mean that there shouldn't be any gender, but that gender should not matter uh, in any uh, part of our life. Uh, should not matter in uh, our uh, choice of uh, hobbies or work or opportunities. Just forget about gender. So there is, according to fourth wave feminism, there is not a single declination, but many different masculinities and femininities. So what is the challenge of forgetting about gender? Because when we see a person, the first thing that our brain notices is, uh, uh, is the gender. So what can we do in order for us to forget it? It's not uh, easy uh, to know this, but I found one study uh, quite recent, and uh, they say that uh, uh, one solution might be the one to introduce another category into the picture. Uh, if we um, introduce uh, the category of gamer and not gamer into the picture, we kind of forget about the gender. So they did um, a study with uh, Splendor Games, uh, gamers, I'm sorry, and uh, uh, people who identified as a gamer uh, were not really, uh, were not, they didn't have a, such a strong uh, stereotype against, uh, against women playing games. Uh, so the, um, what uh, did they think? They think that um, if, uh, the, if the player uh, considered themselves as being a gamer, uh, so they have uh, this strong social identity of being uh, a gamer with gaming attitudes such as a lot of time spent playing and a lot of time going to conventions and uh, gaming-related clothing uh, owner. Um, they kind of forgot about the difference between uh, gender, uh, gender differences. So they asked the Splendor Gamers uh, to rate if the uh, game was... Um, more suitable for male or for female players. And the people who identified as gamers, according to this definition, did not have uh, this uh, uh, strong uh, difference between uh, perce uh, perception of uh, gender. While people who uh, did not identify as a gamer uh, have had uh, this, uh, um, this strong perceived difference. In, to conclude, I will say that uh, if the importance of free to play games uh, can be argued, and the importance of being, people being free to play is undeniable. So I'm sorry I have a sore throat. <laughs> and uh, thank you for your attention.